Well, oh, good evening. Thank you so much. I'm Clay Hobbs. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Pafford Medical Services, your ambulance provider. And I think this is about the fourth time I've been in front of your council. We are just um, in year two now, uh, providing ambulance service to the community of Conway and to Faulkner County. We're going to go over this evening uh, the staffing for the ambulance service, some of our special events and community engagements, our special operations team, and we're going to review the key performance indicators and reports that we promised you when we took over as your ambulance provider. Currently, we have about 82 staff members, including EMTs, paramedics, and supervisory staff, and we are nearly uh, fully staffed. Um, all of our ambulances are staffed every day here within Conway and Faulkner County. We've been participating in events really since day one. That includes toad suck days, uh, many events at the University of Central Arkansas with their football games and basketball games, Hendricks College, city and county high school football games, um, county fair standbys, and then recently the eclipse that we did a couple years, I feel like, of preparedness activities to get ready for the eclipse, and uh, we're glad to see that behind us now. <laughs> I, I did enjoy the eclipse. We got to see about a minute and a half um, in hope, and it was well worth it. it um, so as we told you during our presentation when we became your ambulance provider that we wanted to be engaged in the community, and we have been successful in that, in my opinion. We have been able to integrate the ambulance system in with the fire department, and we have one cohesive group that is preparing to respond together, is training, and is responding to care for the residents of Conway. And that has been a seamless integration. Our special operations team has been working with the police department sheriff's office here in Conway, um, in which we are sending our SWAT paramedics out when the SWAT team goes out to assist them and provide first line patient care um, for not only our strike team members and our SWAT team members from the city and the county, but also patients that may be um, involved in those incidents. Response time data, we've responded to about 3.5%. We've had about a 3.5% increase in call volume here in Conway and Faulkner County. We had 20,563 responses to medical calls within uh, Conway and Faulkner County in the last um, year. 12,801 of those responses were lights and sirens emergency responses to 911 calls. We respond to an average of 55 emergencies daily. And in the last year, our busiest day to respond to emergencies here was 87 calls for ambulance service. What day was on our response time data, you will see that um, we have two days that are actually busier than the rest historically, and that's our Tuesdays and Fridays are busier for us. They account for 15% of the call volume each, and our Saturdays and Sundays are actually two of our lower days with 13% and 14% respectively. We don't really have a lot of call volume overnight here. So if you notice on the, the chart for distribution of calls by hour, when it gets to about 11 p.m. and midnight, we go to 3% of our call volume, and that goes through 6, 7 a.m. And then at 8 a.m., we start building call volume <coughs> again, and then peak time for call volume is between 4 and 5 p.m. Our out-of-shoot data is 2 minutes and 11 seconds for us to have the ambulance, after it's notified, to have the ambulance wheels rolling to a 911 call. And our average response time, this is countywide, is 9 minutes and 32 seconds. We have an average on-scene time in which we're taking care of the patient on scene of 10 minutes and 31 seconds. And it takes us about 11 minutes and 17 seconds to transport the patient from the scene of the incident to the hospital. We have a 19 minute and 48 second hospital drop time. That means that once the ambulance arrives at the door of the hospital, it takes us nearly 20 minutes to get the patient off the stretcher and then back onto the street for the next 911 call. So total average mission time for us is 58 minutes and 45 seconds. Conway, um, we have the cities broken down and you'll notice some of the cities in here include Sherwood and um, 
Jacksonville, Little Rock. And that is because some of the zip codes within the county have um, overreach from those communities into our county. And then we occasionally provide mutual aid assistance to other counties that might call us for, for assistance in the surrounding area. Conway had 16,019 of the run requests. So the city of Conway accounted for 78.8% of the ambulance calls within the county. Greenbrier was the next uh, busiest with 9.47%, followed by Mayflower at 4.6. <clears throat> Out of the 20,526 responses, we transported 13,250 patients to area hospitals. Out of those transports, 43.3% of the patients chose to be transported to Conway Regional Medical Center, and 23.75% chose to be transported to Baptist um, Health in Conway. You'll see we did transport some patients to other facilities throughout the area at their request, or because it was a certain type of patient, maybe a trauma incident or a child that went to the children's hospital directly from the scene. We had 7,294 patients that once the ambulance arrived on scene, they chose not to go to the hospital. And this has historically been a, a problem for the ambulance industry. Um, last year, the legislature passed Act 480, in which um, Act 480 uh, has a law that allows the ambulance provider to connect the patient on scene with a physician to provide a telemedicine visit to determine can the patient be treated on scene, if they need a prescription called in because they don't have their blood pressure medicine renewed, do they need to go to an urgent care center, a behavioral health center, um, or lower level um, you know, physician's office. We just enacted um, that service within Pafford. We've been preparing for about two years through our MedLink Center, and now we have 24-hour physician coverage. So all of our patients uh, statewide now have the opportunity to have a telemedicine visit on site. In that law, it also requires the insurance company to pay the ambulance provider the base rate to respond to that call and uh, requires Medicaid to do the same thing. Huge win for us and huge win for communities like Conway because our cost of readiness um, is so enormous. And it's just like what you have with your police department, your fire department. Um, it's the cost of having the, the ambulance there, the paramedics ready. It's not the actual act of going on the call. It's the anticipation of how many calls are coming in. Do we have enough resources staff? So this is eventually going to help us to, to have the financial wherewithal to, to offset those costs. We transported, 150, we transported patients 153,645 miles with patients on board the ambulance. So we probably, um, we usually times that by about two and a half times. So we, trans, we put probably around 400,000 miles on ambulances here in the city of Conway last year. Our response time data for priority one 911 calls was eight minutes and 59 seconds. And for priority two calls was nine minutes and 42 seconds. You'll see up there that our um, largest priority one call in the city was traffic and transportation incidents. 1,839 traffic accidents that we responded to. Those are the types of emergency calls that we're getting an ambulance out there just as quickly as we can. They're responding with lights and sirens um, activated. The calls in yellow are our priority call, two calls. They're a 911 call that does not require lights and sirens to respond to the incident, but maybe for a psychiatric problem, a sick person that's not feeling well, someone vomiting, um, back pain, um, other situations like that. And that's how we divide those calls. We provide screening using the National Academies of Emergency Dispatch, and every call into the 911 center at Pafford receives um, scrutiny to determine what type of call it is, and they provide pre-arrival instructions while the ambulance is responding. Transfers and discharges were an important part of the ambulance committee here. The, uh, both hospitals voiced concerns over not being able to get patients transferred out appropriately. We have met the hospital's needs uh, on transferring patients emergently and non-emergently. We 
provided 3,450 um, transports for area hospitals last year. 1,929 of those came out of Conway Regional, 1,408 came out of uh, Baptist Conway. And then you'll see a variety of others that we, you know, from St. Vincent and Conway Behavioral Health, that we um, also had transports. This is just a map that, that shows the heat map of where those calls are coming from um, that we respond to with ambulances from Conway and Faulkner County. Of course, you'll see that Conway is the busiest and Greenbrier and Mayflower have just a little bit different of a color there to show the difference. I wanna thank you for allowing us to continue to serve as your ambulance provider. Um, we thank you for the opportunity and I'll answer any questions that you might have. Could you go back to that previous slide? And I think this may have kind of come up the last time y'all were here, but so you're telling me that it's some time, or at least once, a con an ambulance went from Conway down to Lake Hamilton, in Malvern? So it also may be a patient, an ambulance from here brought a transfer back. Okay. Or they went, they took a patient there for a procedure, a test, and then brought them back okay. to the county. Okay. Back to, I do know, if I, I don't know this. If I remember correctly, don't y'all provide backup other areas when that you service if other areas are hit real hard and vice versa, if they back up here? We do. And that's something that's really benefited Conway and Faulkner County as well as the other communities we serve. Um, the night that we had the fire downtown um, just a few months ago, you know, we responded extra ambulances from Saline County to come up and help because we knew it was going to be a long event. We knew we were going to have to help with firefighter rehab and so forth. So we sent two ambulances uh, from Saline County up here. We've had instances where they've had mass casualty incidents and we've sent ambulances down there. Um, and it's, it's worked out to where I don't think anyone's provided any more service uh, than anyone else has. We do go up to the Damascus area and you know, north of um, of Greenbrier considerably. You know, just looking today at the at that, it's 125 calls last year we responded to in their county uh, because they had no ambulance service available. So we've been a good neighbor to other yes. folks. Absolutely. And um, we appreciate being able to do that, but we also monitor that because we don't want to get abused. And um, when we get when we call for help, which will come someday, mm -hmm. we'll have to. I hope that those people that we've helped all those years send their ambulances to help us. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to have Sean come up here and just tell you exactly how we're doing that because he's going to be better off. To... Question is, how many ambulances keep in the city of Conway on a regular basis, and then how many others are scattered? Okay, uh, we've got several inside uh, the city of Conway, uh, one at Fire Station 1, Fire Station 2, Fire Station 6, Fire Station 4, and those are 24 hours. Uh, we're recently remodeling a building that will add another 24 hour, which we call it Station 7, which will be right down from Fire Station 7. And then we have a BLS truck inside the city that's a 24 hour, and an ILS or an advanced truck that is a 12 hour truck as well. And then we have a 24-hour truck in Greenbrier and a 24-hour truck in Valonia and a 12 or a 14-hour truck in Mayflower. And from time to time we get really really busy. We may have to call in an extra crew and Packard has allowed us that ability to pro, uh, to call in extra crews as we need. Sounded like seven inside the city. Mm -hmm. Four, five, six, yes sir, seven. That's quite an quite an advance mm -hmm. to where we were. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we've we've been very pleased with with Pafford at the job y'all done. It's been tremendous. Yeah, I was gonna say I've heard nothing but good things. So we appreciate you very much. Mm-hmm. Hear that before the <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Absolutely. You'll hear that first. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when we first started talking with mm -hmm. y'all and y'all came and made this presentation and how smoothly that went. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that. <clears throat> any, any questions, Council? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you all so much. Thank you.
We'll, yeah. we'll see you all next year. <laughs> next up.